Look, if you can't quit it, you have a habit and you cannot quit it. And it, then embrace your habit and drink consciously. Just bring awareness into your habit. So the worst thing you can do is you can you drink and then the next day you beat yourself up because that's the nature of the mind. I will come and say, you stupid, you idiot, you're still drinking and you're judging yourself. I would say embrace what you do and be aware. You are aware that you're drinking. So when you're drinking, remind yourself that you're consciously drinking and you're aware that the next day you can feel like shit. And when you do feel like shit the next day, your mind will come to beat you up. So bring your awareness there that you were aware of what you were doing. And consequently, the next day, you're just going to suffer. Let your body suffer, but don't blame yourself for what you did. Don't allow your mind to go to this place of beating you up. Simply be aware of the mind because it's going to come and blame you. So bring this awareness into your drinking habit or smoking or whether you're addicted to sugar or whatever is your story or you like to drink cough medicine or whatever, or you're taking pills. I don't know, whatever you do. I never tell people what to do or what not to do. But what I share is simply bring awareness to it. And once you bring awareness to it, a phenomena takes place. Because now you're no longer drinking or smoking like a robot. Now there's awareness there. And you are total with what you're doing. You're 100% one with what you're doing even though that habit is damaging your body. But you have awareness of it, and there's no mind boggling. So make that shift. And in making that shift, what happens is you're allowing for the space to open up. Because you're no longer in this contracted place of beating yourself up. and then falling back. It's a vicious cycle. You beat yourself up for a day or two, and then after two days, you go back, start drinking, and you feel great, and then the next day, you start beating yourself up. That's the worst thing you can do. Bring your awareness and be aware of the whole process. And by bringing that awareness, and not beating yourself up, space opens up. Something relaxes, something is opening. And of course, you pray, you ask your, your higher self to free you. You ask your higher self to guide you to light. Instead of beating yourself up, you keep putting it out in existence that please, Take my habits off of me. Lead me to the light. Let me become free from this habit. This habit is a karma. You are going to, you're going to this karma, karmic process, and it needs to clear, clear itself. I'm gonna send you a message. Back here. Um, Nicola. Hi, Nicola. Do you, um, I unmuted you. Can you talk? 
No? Okay. So I did answer your question. When you get a chance, because I know you lost your connection, uh, you got bumped out of Zoom. So later on, when you get a chance, watch this, this recording, uh, and then you will see how I answered your question and see if that's going to help you or not. Okay? Another question? Please. Um, I had the idea talking about Yanin, Yanin, that Yanin. There's, there's like a, not an opposition, but there's like a two part, a, a Yanin and the Bhakti being two different paths, like Yanin being knowledge and Bhakti being a devotional path. Am I confused with okay. the words or something? Um, right. The, the yani was the definition of the, uh, it's, yeah, the part you're confusing is there, these are not paths. Bhakti is a path, path of devotion, like arriving through devotion to the divine self. The other part of that is the path of inquiry by questioning and inquiry, who am I? So one is worship or doing a lot of chantings and dancing and losing yourself in the oneness. And the other one is questioning. What Yani is, we're talking about the master, not not the path of the master. Yani is the one, the sad guru, the awakened one. Is there right. a word for that inquiry, that kind of way of, uh, you know, deep, deeping, deep, uh, diving deep? Yeah, in? yeah it's, it's what Ramana Maharshi, Papaji, Nisargadat, um, Maharaj or Aramish Balsakar, this is the Advaita Vedanta teaching. The Advaita Vedanta is a path of inquiry, self-inquiry. So it's a different school of way of getting to self-realization. And those teachers, Advaita Vedanta teachers are teaching self-inquiry and then there's like Mamri Tananda Mai Amaji, which she's teaching and she's sharing the path of bhakti, which is the path of devotion. So they have a lot of bhajans, they have a lot of kirtans. There's a lot of gatherings that people come together and they're singing devotional songs. And they do a lot of prayer and they lose themselves in divine oneness. So that's one school of, you know, there are different ways to get to the top of the mountain. So I was never attracted to that. My attraction was to Advaita Vedanta, which was the path of inquiry, self-inquiry and silence. Hello? Yeah, it's it's Nicola here. Uh, I uh, put the question earlier about alcohol, but I hadn't figured out um, how to unmute. Uh, it was uh, I had to change the settings uh, on my phone. No problems. Uh, Great. Then can you, Nicola? Can you speak a little bit louder? Louder. I yeah, think that... I, most people accuse me of speaking too loud. That's funny. Yeah, okay. I can. Um, well, I, I think I got the gist of your answer there anyway, but uh, if you can just uh, wrap it up shortly so I didn't miss anything, that would be nice. Right. So do you mind if I share your question with our audience? No, not at all. Okay. Okay. 